Raise your hand if you want to raise a healthy, happy puppy. Of course you do, but you probably don't have time to go to vet school, become a certified dog trainer, and also become an expert on your dog's breed all today. Am I right? Well, you're in luck because I've got four easy tips for you today that's gonna cover some of the big basics on puppy raising. Of course, you could go much more into depth on puppy raising with years of schooling, but these four tips, I think you're gonna get pretty far on your own. Surely you've heard of enrichment. It's a big thing in the animal care world, including dog training. You probably think it means giving the dog an outlet to do things that he loves to do. We call that species typical behaviors. This is stuff like digging and chasing and foraging and pouncing and shredding. You would be right. Those are all part of enrichment. But enrichment is more than just puzzle toys and a filled Kong. Enrichment actually covers a broad range of habits that keep our puppies looking and feeling their best. Enrichment is like filling an emotional cup as a human. You need more than just hobbies to make your life well-rounded and sufficient to feel content. For example, you also need to feel good mentally and physically, and you need to eat good foods and have a safe place to live. If you need a place to start on what enrichment means when it comes to your dog's hobbies and interests, watch this video after we're done here. But today, we're gonna talk about some of the other parts of enrichment that will keep your dog healthy and happy. Again, more than just puzzle toys. First, let's talk about security and safety. Now, of course, we need to keep our dogs safe. If a dog doesn't feel safe, they're gonna have a hard time learning new things and have a hard time trusting you and listening to you. This will show up when it comes to leash skills, recall, and really countless other skills. Keeping a dog safe means things like helping them love their crate so they have a safe and comfortable place to sleep and can wait for you to return home after you go to work or grocery shop. Safety means keeping him on a leash and helping him feel comfortable about it so he's not at risk of running away. Safety also means choosing his activities carefully so he's not put in a position where he's uncomfortable. Now, one example of this I hear about a lot is about dog parks and doggy daycares. Many dogs enjoy playing with other dogs, but we don't recommend those venues as the place to find or play with other dogs. The risk for it to go poorly is just too high, and those places also expose your dog to diseases, even if they've been fully vaccinated. Now, there are other, better ways to find playmates for your dog that don't involve putting him at risk. Look for videos on this channel if you wanna know about healthy alternatives. Just search for doggy daycare and dog parks on our channel, or just let us know in the comments if you want links to those videos. The bottom line is to train your dog to feel safe and make sure his situations help him feel comfortable, not scared or stressed. Now the next tip I have about raising a healthy and happy dog has to do with the environment. You want to make sure that dog's environment is the best one for his or her temperament. Most dogs will enjoy an exciting environment from time to time, but they definitely need time when the home is calm and they can rest and relax and process all the new stuff their puppy brains are learning. In addition to the safety aspect I talked about earlier, you want to set your dog up for success by giving him all the tools he needs for his day. Now this often refers to appropriate levels of mental and physical exercise, but also cool down activities and routines that can help him get ready for some rest. The time when your puppy is sleeping is when the brain is processing all the information that he learned. Now without that processing time, the new skills won't take hold. And if your training isn't going so well, check the nap schedule and make sure your young puppy is getting between 16 to 18 hours of sleep in a day. As part of the environment, we also want to set our dogs up for success. What I mean by that is set up training sessions that are fun and engaging and easy and in an environment that is ideal for learning. As you and your puppy learn to work together, you can slowly increase the difficulty. But just take small baby steps right now. At the pro level of my online course, we often talk about the pie. Now the pie represents something that you're working on with your dog, like recall or go to place. Instead of offering the whole pie when first teaching these skills, we offer a piece of the pie or even a bite or a crumb or just a dollop of the whipped cream. Uh, these are just analogies, no real pies given to our dogs. But by breaking down the skills into baby steps, we set our dogs up for success. It can be hard for humans to break skills down into the steps that are appropriate for young puppies. 
but that's something that I can help you with as part of the online course. Now the video lessons break things down for you, so you don't have to really think about it, you just follow along. All right, the next category of enrichment I wanna review with you is health, hygiene, and diet. Whoa, <laughs> there's a lot there. Each of these are entire specialties for professionals in the dog world, but I'm gonna give you a small piece of the pie for those. My number one tip on health is to research the food that you give your dog to just make sure it's the best one for him. I like this website for my research and find information to be unbiased and helpful. Of course, what works for your dog might be different than mine. So put on your puppy detective hat when introducing a new food and watch carefully for signs that it's good for him. Food has a lot to do with things like stress or anxiety being able to handle new situations and even learn new things. Get the best food you can for the best chance of a healthy, happy puppy. Now, when it comes to hygiene, my number one tip is to make sure your dog doesn't get matted. I'm looking at you, doodle owners. Now, I don't mean to throw you under the bus here, but I'm just telling you that you have a big job in this department. This is Master, a multi-poo. He's a puppy student in the pro level of the course and his humans have been working hard to help Master enjoy brush time and to keep his fur from matting. Master's mom recently left town and left her husband in charge of Master's care and feeding. He decided to give Master a bath. He was helping but accidentally let him air dry, which resulted in some matting. That meant Master needed a complete shave down to start over. We totally forgive her husband because he was just trying to help. But you can see that taking proper care of your dog's coat is really important, which includes adjusting to overcome any past mistakes. Now I can assure you that everyone in Master's household now knows the drill, bath, then comb while drying to prevent mats. And when it comes to health, we also wanna be aware of too many treats or unhealthy human food. Dogs are natural foragers and they will often eat anything you offer to them, even if it's not good for them. So use your critical thinking human brain and ensure your pup's diet consists of the good kibble that he needs. In addition to a few treats that help him work hard while learning new things. Here's a pro tip for you. If you're doing a lot of training or rewarding, consider using kibble as the reward. And if he won't work for it, try using the same brand of kibble with a little bit different protein source. It often seems novel and interesting to your dog and he will work hard for it. Win-win. Another important tip I wanna review with you today is teaching your dog independence. Now, those of you with Velcro dogs are probably yelling, yes, I want that. Believe me, I have one of those clinger dogs too. Now, if you have a breed that is naturally more tuned into the human, it's gonna be really important for you to do things with your pup that increase his confidence and independence while you're away from him. This includes a strong comfort in the crate so you can leave the house as well as plenty of exposure in a positive way to new things and doing fun games and activities with your dog to help build their confidence. Have you done any confidence building games recently? If you haven't, I want you to head to this video next and begin to implement some of these fun games into your dog's life. You can totally start them today. Even if your dog is older, it's never too late to help him feel confident with new things and being alone. Now, since we don't have all the time to become experts in our dogs and we just want a happy, healthy dog, instead, I think today's tips will help you. And if you wanna help us, please subscribe to the channel and Use the super thanks feature if you'd like. We work hard to put these videos together and we'd love to know that you love them. All right, did any of these tips surprise you? Did I miss anything? Let me know below and let me know if you have any follow-up questions. See you next time.